Dance is and always has been a primary foundation to our cultural identity. As diasporans, we rely on our culture as a means to connect to our identity, both past and present. Beyond cultural and spiritual expression, dance is also a physical form of expression and a shared experience with the community in which anyone can participate, even without knowing the language or traditions. Upon losing our homeland, the existence of Armenian dance, like our other cultural characteristics, became increasingly susceptible to extinction. Thousands of local songs and dances were lost as a result of our exile and genocide, and what remained was only what our memories managed to preserve. However, there is a growing movement to reintroduce Armenian ethnic folk dance to our cultural consciousness. I'm Krista Marina Apardian. And I'm Haik Minasian. And you're listening to High Tuk Talks, the official podcast of the AYF West. Today's episode, the Armenian Ethnographic Movement with Alex Apanasadeh. A couple of Armenians talking in the world. Alex Avanazadeh holds a bachelor's degree in political science from California Lutheran University and is a graduate student at Tufts University pursuing a master's in law and diplomacy with academic interests in post-Soviet and Caucasus geopolitics, the formation of national ideologies, as well as Armenian music and dance ethnography. Alex is also a trained pianist and a practicing doll player who spends most of his recreational time teaching Armenian traditional dance. Since the summer of 2015, when he participated in the AYF internship in Armenia, Alex has remained involved with Armenia's ethnographic dance movement, spending time with the Kadin Ethnographic Dance Ensemble in Yerevan with director Gagi Ginosyan. Alex continues to teach and provide workshops on Armenian dance to the local Armenian communities of Los Angeles and Washington, D.C., where he currently resides. And he is a member of the Los Angeles-based Armenian music and dance ensemble Lernazank, and is also the founder and current dance instructor for Hamaskain's DC dance group. All right. Alex, thanks for being here. Excited to have you here. I wish we could be dancing right now. That's I know. For I sure, wish we were doing a dance class. And it's not visual. <laughs> no one's going to get to see, but maybe they'll be able to feel the dancing through the audio. So, Alex, we kind of just wanted to dive right in uh, with a question. What does dance and Armenian dance mean to you? Um, Armenian dance, um, the way I conceptualize it as a, a uh, more of a ritual as opposed to something that we like an activity per, or something yeah like something that we perceive as performance although of course it is performed that's where most people that's the medium that most people see it in but I think um, the majority of us mainly in, di- in the diaspora it's a little bit different in Armenia but the majority of us in the diaspora perceive um, Armenian dance more of as a uh, performance aesthetic uh, rather than something that we would think of as like to engage in ritual, for example, you yeah. see Native Americans, you see other groups. You know, if they want to showcase like protest or you know be sort of more in tune with nature or sort of engage in sort of any adrenaline or They're rush or any sort of it with another physiological, yeah, those are all like things that are drawn from ritual, and so that's how I sort of perceive Armenian dance. Well, so how did you get into Armenian dance? And when I mean Armenian dance, is, it's uh, ethnic Armenian folk dancing, which is something we're seeing a lot more these days. Um, I remember being in Armenia and no, like every at the end of every last Sunday of every month, the community would get together and dance in front of Gaska, and it was the coolest thing. And I, would, I remember thinking, like, this is exactly what the goal of society is at the end of the day, is to do your work and so that you can, at the end of the week or end of the month, all dance together as a community. Mm-hmm. But it's something that's, I feel like it's trendy. And wh- how did you get first interested into this? So the first time, actually, was when I was doing the AYF internship in 2015. Um, I was, it, it wasn't that event, but I'm, I definitely went to those all the mm-hmm. time. But it was just mainly, I was just walking through opera and i saw this display of yakushta which for first time you're seeing it or? first time i ever saw it so i had i had no idea what it was before i just saw it and was immediately just encaptured by like the could whole you, thing could you tell us a little bit about what, y- what yakushta would yakushta look like yakushta is basically a, a a martial war dance that comes from sasun and it's it's a, a category of dance um un- called clap dances mm-hmm. and uh basically yar is the 
like Parthian word for like friend. Mm -hmm. um, in today's like context, we use it for like lover or bae. like you know. Yeah, exactly. that's how I use it. You know, that's, uh, the Armenian exactly. translation for bay is exactly. that what it is? Because they use yeah. it in music a lot. Yeah, yeah. Before but it, it sounds was, more poetic in Armenian. <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> sorry, but guys. um, yeah, yeah. So yar just means like friend, and then khushda or khushti it has like there's a lot of debate on like. The this word it, yeah. it it you know in like farsi it's like kind of uh um or like old old persian it's kind of interpreted as like wrestling mm. which is also like uh the tip of a spear in armenian mm. like um so it's it the and place so that contact maybe yeah you know? so basically it's like uh a friend of war or something and so the way you dance is like it's you and then you have an opponent and you kind of it, it mimics the movements of a ram so you 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 know you go away from each other and then you come and you charge at each other and, and you clash hands, which like represents horns. Mm -hmm. So Yakushta is about building adrenaline, um, mm -hmm. you know, it could be historically prior to battle or even after battle as a way to celebrate victory. Heavy, aggressive energy and yeah. stuff. So, so you saw this. In that's the, what I saw yeah. for the first time. I had no idea what it was. Didn't understand where it came from. All I wanted to do was like learn it, mm -hmm. learn more about it. And basically that moment from then on, I, I've been just in my own personal research and learnings about everything about Armenian traditional dance and its ritualistic aspect. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's how I basically got into all like, of this. Like completely fascinated. Yeah. Same when I was doing Birthright Armenia, they had these Monday night classes and it was all these ethnic dances. And I think a lot of us that go there have been learning it from out there rather than mm -hmm. the diaspora out here. Yeah. Right. Um, we spoke about a couple different types of dances already, as I'm sure we'll talk about more throughout our conversation. But um, Alex, can you give us a little bit of a timeline of Armenian dance, especially like say post genocide yeah so basically um armenian dance has changed a lot over the past hundred years the genocide unfortunately eradicated a lot of our culture bearers mm -hmm. and uh and so the people that immigrated to armenia um many of them most of Armenia's ethnographic research is concentrated around the Sasnagyurs. So mm -hmm. those include Ashnak, Verin Basmabert, Nirkin Basmabert, Sasnashen. Um, you know, you can go to Aparan uh, to look at material that comes from Mush, uh, Alashkert. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Martuni around Lake Sevan has Alashkert season. They, they like get a lot of material from mm -hmm. there. But so basically, like much of the ethnographic material we have today is comes from the highlands. And I, which is what I've come to discover. And Western Armenian genocide survivors that migrated to Armenia yeah, after the genocide. Exactly. Yeah. So, mm. so you know, whoever had migrated, those that were left were sort of the people that were tapped into during the whole ethnographic movement and as a way to gain music and dance material, mm -hmm. um, which is now propagated today um, in Armenia and the diaspora for different, for nationalist purposes. But Well, um, what's interesting to me is the... So those genocide survivors went to Armenia where the regional culture was still in the area, let's say. Then there was the other aspect, the other side of Armenian genocide survivors who went abroad to countries that didn't have similar dances. And then they created these new dances, right, in America, in, the, in Europe, the Amerika High dances, mm -hmm. I guess we could call it. Um, or diasporan they, dances. Diasporan dances. And, but they have elements of Armenian folk right. dance, but I could see how it, was be, it would be hard to be as accurate as possible, right? Yeah, so um, from what I've seen just from personal experience, those many of uh, diasporans post-genocide that came to the United States, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but mm -hmm. are, are more from the, you know, a lot from Kharpert, a lot Kharpert from Diyarbakir. Especially the Massachusetts. Yeah, um, lot, sort of on, on that um, southeast, southern belt, I guess. of More west, too. More west, yeah. too, yeah, of Turkey. So um, uh, uh, that has a different regional style. Um, yeah. And so that, that regional style, like, is, um, you know, there's a lot of oud, there's a lot of, like, uh, mm -hmm. dumbbag. Of course, there are, there's, like, zurna and, like, dudu. But even different too, types of zurna. Yeah, so even know? different types of zurna. And so Which it's, is it's the just... high pitching. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it's just a different regional style. Mm -hmm. And so that style arrived here in the United States and sort of, um, it, it, it kind of developed into its own thing as well. There were mm -hmm. uh, elements of... Um, you know, what might have been, you know, town or village dances that were brought over here initially, but, you know, they get sort they're re of... Reborn in their yeah, own Yeah, they're sort of reborn in their own ways, and, and then they get called different things, and, and maybe the expression of it changes too, I don't know, because I haven't really seen much material from that region, at, you know, ethnography-wise, so I don't have the best frame of reference, but um, yeah. but what I, can, what I do see, though, is that, um, for instance, at, at like, 
Barahandas and stuff, I see these dances and you can actually compare them to um, a lot of you know, Kurdish dances in yeah. the region. Especially the Diyarbakirci, like yeah. Onik Dingchan, it's very, it's got, uh, I don't know, Kurdish elements yeah. or like, or just mixed. The styles know. are very similar and like, and, and, but you can even say the same for like, the, see the ethnographic material that's, um, that's uh, recorded in present day Armenian that we define as like the highland sort of aesthetic. Those that same style is also related to the Kurds of the Highlands as well. So mm -hmm. they have a very similar style as well. So basically, like what ethnography does is it shows us that you know nationalism can sometimes make us think, although it, we ha we value what it is today because it's a necessity um, for for survival is one thing. But but what it sort of makes people realize is that culture is at the end of the day it's a regional mm -hmm. thing. It's shared and right. and, yeah. and so and so. Food, music, exactly. dance, and especially and, uh, for Armenians. I mean, we're all over the world, yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> so we adapt. Right you know, our own little subcultures everywhere we right. go. Right. So the goal of nationalism, mm -hmm. right, is to unify. That's mm -hmm. what the goal is. Um, and, but but the interesting thing is, though, ethnography now is is being used to basically educate all Armenians on all the regional aesthetics of Armenian expression, mm -hmm. and to basically incorporate all those regional aesthetics into a national identity. Mm -hmm. So, like being able to express yourself in different ways so uh, you know be, me being able to express myself in like how armenians from the highlands express themselves how armenians from urmia express themselves from Artsakh, from diarbek you know so incorporating all these regional expressions into your national identity well i feel like that's a lot of the time we have a hard time uh connecting to armenia um maybe on a spiritual level and you know you're talking about expressing yourself in the highland way I mean, do you see this as a way to, like, make that connection with what historic Armenia might have felt like or was like, you know? Yeah, you know so I mean? in um, so I usually reference uh, Nujdeh's works when I talk about ethnography because Nujdeh speaks a lot about, or I've read about what he refers to as spiritual colonies. Who's, can you give us some background on who he is? Oh, Garigin Nujdeh is <laughs> as the liberator of... Uh, <laughs> is, is the ultimate liberator, in my opinion, of Armenian We love him, nation. especially <laughs> here in the AYF. <laughs> yeah, Fun fact, the, uh, he founded the AYF. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, the, and the true romantic nationalist. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I always reference Nujda when I talk about ethnography because Nujda references spiritual colonies. And what he means by that is in order to basically taking a step in the direction of uh, reclaiming lost territory, um, we we basically want to be able to encompass and, and embody the the spirit of um, what he refers to as Daron, or Daron Aganutun, which he refers to as the epicenter of Armenian strength. Daron um, is a region in Armenia where the Sasun, right? Where right, area. right. So in his nationalist ideology, he refers to as Daron as the epicenter of Armenian strength, mm -hmm. although at the same time, all Armenian soil is considered sacred. Right. Um, so, but... Basically, ethnography, we use that as a way to connect to these sort of what he refers to as spiritual colonies or mm -hmm. these lost colonies that he, refer, that he refers to as spiritual colonies. So it's the medium of connection um, to embody the spirit of that region. Yeah, yeah. that's really interesting. Yeah. Can you talk about the resurgence of ethnic folk dance? What sparked it? Was it like a post-Soviet era situation? I mean, what sparked that interest? Uh, was it a thing during the Soviet Union in Armenia or... Was it suppressed? You know. Um, well, the Soviet Union in, in about the 1930s went on a policy of uh, cultural revisionism. Mm -hmm. It was a state-sponsored policy all throughout the Soviet Union. Um, other Soviet states had it more harsh, you know, to varying degrees of the other when it came to revisionism. But Armenia was definitely a victim to it. Um, essentially, what happened was the the ritualistic aspects of Armenian expression and traditions was looked at as primitive. So there was a, um, a project of revision, revisionism in which the Soviet Union looked at uh, our instruments and our ways of life as not being suitable to be part of the Soviet consciousness. It's like not modern enough or something. Yeah, so they appropriated, you know, really, really appropriated everything that we had into sort of European-esque, Eurocentric expression. Mm -hmm. Um, which is an I which is ironic in and of itself because well, they were like an anti. Well, yeah, right. The, but that, that's there. That's another whole other discussion. <laughs> but is that yeah. why in the national dance that we see in the diaspora a lot of the times has like these ballet elements in it, right? Like yeah, exactly.
ethnic folk dance is different from the national dance that Armenia and we in the diaspora have practiced and performed throughout the 20th century. Ethnic folk dance is exactly what it sounds like. The local dances that developed throughout Armenia, rooted in our environment and traditions, while national dance is a modernized iteration of Armenian ethnic dance that caters to the Eurocentric performance aesthetic. Yeah, okay, that's what. Yeah, that is. so it comes from the it comes from the Soviet slash European tradition, um, and so that that's what was deemed as. Um, basically the, the, the correct. Well, and, how did that get to story. the rest of the diaspora then? Cause uh, I mean, where did that start? So, you know? so that's another interesting question. So there were on starting on the East coast, there were sort of communist friendly Armenian mm. organizations that sponsored, um, the Soviet Armenian state ensemble to come to the United States mm -hmm. and, mm. and perform. And, and that basically began the blueprints of what we perceive as Armenian right. dance. Yeah, so we didn't even know any today. better than I feel like, you know, we're yeah. assuming, okay. Would you, extent, yeah. would you say that at that point it, it felt maybe more performative than ritualistic at that point, that, yeah. that transition there? Of course. I mean, that's also just part of nation building when you're, when well, that's a later discussion when Armenia becomes actually independent. But the yeah. thing is, is that um, that was the start of our change in sort of perception of Armenian culture and I mean, we were lost right where we, you know we we lost our most of our uh, nation sure, the and genocide didn't help and, obviously yeah, yeah like so. we're and we're living in the exile and far away from the actual uh, yeah. land and we're trying to figure out what it meant to probably yeah. be armenian and okay here's something it looks about yeah. right and this same tragedy un unfortunately it exists today i mean we don't as armenians we really don't have the you know as much material as like we need to understand like who we are, who we are yeah. regionally and stuff. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the material that we have today is, is, is very much recreated yeah. um, for nationalist purposes, um, mm -hmm. you know, in, in some circles. But. So then what happened next uh, up until today? Like how did the, this ethnic folk dancing kind of, right. So the, again? so, so basically the Soviet tradition went on until close to the collapse of the Soviet union. Mm -hmm. And, and so groups that pioneered the ethnographic movement, such as the Agunk uh, uh, ethnographic ensemble, they were like the, the people who kickstarted the the resurgence of it, and then later down the line, maybe about in the I don't know early two thousands, uh, there was a group that ar arose called the Garin Folk Ensemble, mm -hmm. and them, yeah. and so yeah, and so they've basically their the foundation of their group is actually based off of Tsarakronism, which is basically not Garigin Nezhda's ideology of Armenian nationalism, mm -hmm. and Tsarakronism basically in English translates to race religion. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's always interpreted as like a, as it's fascism, but it's not fascism. One of those words that, that sounds now. better in Armenian again, you know, <laughs> yeah. and then you try to translate it. And you're like, it doesn't have the same the, ring. It yeah, same it's ring. not, it's not, can't be interpreted the same as European fascism. It's, like, it's a different concept. I think, yeah, anyways. Um, it's a, the whole, that's, again, that's a whole other discussion as well, but mm. th that group, Garin Ensemble's group is based off of the Tsarakron ideology, and m many of their, specifically their war dances, are hyper militarized mm. in their style. A little more aggressive. Yeah, lots of yeah. more aggressive, like improvisation in their mm -hmm. moves. And you know, I've, I've I've danced with people in that group. I've been bruised. Yeah. I've bled. Like it's it's oh, the dude, real. Every time I do thing. the, I push to my hands. Yeah. it hurts so much. So you compare that to like sort of the Soviet tradition. You can there's a huge contrast. You know, the Soviet tradition is very sort of. Um, timid more like ballet yeah and and the guardian tradition is the exact opposite of that but i um, think that that kind of militant aspect makes it so powerful like it right. almost feels like performing the dance in itself almost feels like a form of protest right. uh, unifying yeah. in a unifying yeah, way yeah it is that's what that's what it's meant for it's a nationalist group right. the nationalist folk but especially group. in yeah. the situation they were in in the 90s and the 2000s where we're like surrounded by enemies and we're in a very existential issue and mm -hmm. we need to be tough to survive you know and i could see that being as like the energy that they're trying to give the people yeah and so um that's that's basically what it is yeah so the Kadian folk en ensemble group um, was it received like, was there any cultural backlash to this? Like, were there, like, you know, after 60, 70 years of thinking Armenian dance was this way, has there been any pushback like that? There's very much been pushback. Oh, really? Um, so, the, basically, when the ethnographic movement arose, it created a huge... The, much of the people that were still perpetuating the Soviet tradition got very defensive. Um, 
because that's what they, they thought maybe this was like what yeah so if you're yeah. somebody who's been practicing a certain style for most of your life and you've revolved your armenian identity around that and this and now it's being challenged it's very difficult to sort of wrap your head around and accept True. something of course like i mean if someone told me that armenian songs that i sang suddenly like weren't armenian or were completely changed i would be shocked yeah. i would but those feel are, overwhelmed but those doesn't that still have some sort of armenian value though it was armenians doing this feeling that, that it was still played its part in the culture the yeah, only, the only criticism the only uh, if we're talking about the soviet tradition so that's another sort of argument that i receive all the time mm -hmm. as well you know there were armenian elements and you know it was armenians doing it and and and, and, and it's just another style of armenian dance the Couldn't only it's the regional dance of america right maybe. so <laughs> the 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 only rebuttal i would have to that is that this style, the Soviet style, is is not something that's born out of like, you know, this is just another it's fun type of culture. This is a state sponsored policy. We have to remember that. Yeah. We have to remember that because it's a state sponsored policy, there is an agenda behind it. And that right. agenda is to basically collapse the idea of nationhood, mm -hmm. collapse the idea of nationalism, and unify the Soviet Union under a single consciousness through mm -hmm. this type of expression. So, so to perpetuate this, Unfortunately, to the Armenian psyche, that's the type of effect that it has. But when you when you introduce the ethnographic movement, um, basically, it, and it is very primitive. The ethnographic movement is based off quote unquote primitive traditions, mm -hmm. um, more ritualistic, more based off animalistic movements and things of that mm -hmm. nature. And and it invokes a certain type of spirit that's like not deemed as advanced um, in in certain um, imperialist spheres. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, earlier, we were watching videos about of, of dances from different regions around Armenia. Um, can you chat with us a little bit about the role of appropriation in these dances? I mean, I'm sure we see it throughout history. In some ways, it's it's adapting, but in other ways, it is appropriation. Can you just give us a little um, overview of what that looks like? Yeah, so this this is a really... Um it, it can get very complicated, mm -hmm. um, but, but basically, and if I'm going to give my opinion, um, appropriation is... I view the Armenian people in some aspect as being more Eurocentric in some regards. And there's a lot of reasons why I think this, that part of it has to do with Christianity, part of it has to do with um, sort of, and Christianity has sort of ties to Western Europe. Well, I was going to say, is this a, do you mean in a, re, in a recent way or in an ancient way as well? Um, more more, more recent, I, w I would okay. say. Although the, the church throughout history, let's, we have to, we can't forget that the church was also the people, was the institution that recorded a lot of music, mm -hmm. and it usually just recorded things that it deemed worthy of yeah. being, you know what I'm saying, so like, yeah. but, but, but more recently, to be honest, okay. um, it, it was, you know, Christianity has played sort of a Eurocentric role in, in the Armenian psyche, so, mm. um, and, and that's just one thing, having a nation state in and of itself also comes with some conditions of modernization mm -hmm. and, and things of that nature. So that also affects the expression of culture. And so it's it's there's this sort of internal battle that I feel like with a lot of Armenians is 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 accepting, you know, recognizing what it means to have a nation state, recognizing what Christianity means in the context of Armenian identity, but also understanding that um, when you're performing or you're learning about Armenian expression or music and dance, you have to be aware of the things that have changed it and tried to control it. Mm -hmm. And 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 if you're aware of that, you're able to resist on an ideological level. Um, and, and really, which in my opinion is true resistance. Um, so when we talk about appropriation, um, you know, I think it's, it's art is art at the end of the day, yeah. you know. So... It's there's a lot of great. For instance, Tigran Hamasian, who is an Armenian like jazz pianist, mm -hmm. um, has done some amazing work um, with jazz and, and Armenian Incredibly styles. Incredibly talented. Yeah, guy. and, and yeah. he's and I mean, is it appropriation? Like, yeah, you can call it appropriation, but it's he's an absolute genius. It's a work of mm -hmm. art, you know. But but you know, just because it's appropriate doesn't mean you're not allowed to engage in that. Basically, mm -hmm. what you just need to have is an awareness of right. of, this, of the whole cultural political dynamic that has taken hold of Armenians you know, in recent history. and For sure. Yeah. It was also interesting um, in some of those videos to see other regions around Armenia th that have dance very similar to Armenian dance. Was that because of the Soviet Union, Sovietization of the dance? Or yeah, like, so a lot of, if you look at a lot of, even today, post-Soviet Union, a lot of state dance ensembles 
um, they all carry the Soviet tradition. The Armenian state dance ensemble today carries the Soviet tradition. They do a lot of actually really weird things too. But mm. um, <laughs> like uh, random question, real fast: How Armenian is the bert dance? You know when they get on their shoulders and they go in a circle. So this nobody, <laughs> I I just I haven't it. like talked to anybody that really uh, knows where that, that came, came from. from or how it sort of formed. We do so build I'm not going to provide so my like, um, yeah. <laughs> I can't necessarily provide my opinion on it. But um, anyways, right, yeah. Continue, so continue. but um, but yeah. So so a, a lot of post-Soviet states, their state dance ensembles still carry the Soviet tradition. So if you look at the uh, Georgian, or in the Caucasus specifically, Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, their state dance ensembles are like this, like the same aesthetic. With like a little bit of... I yeah, know, I mean, there's a little bit of nuanced. slight, n yeah, nuanced, you know, um, changes and components of their expression. But like for the most part, it's this generalized sort of Orientalist Caucasus expression of dance so that's the soviet or the national dance aspect but how about on a folk dance level um the similar similarities there between the other cultures around us i know that kochari a lot of the cultures mm -hmm. around us have a kochari um right. uh, you know maybe we share the same dance with assyrians and kurds and azeris sure. and georgians how would you explain that to someone so so one thing that i from personal experience i always looked at you know um dance whether it be dance food music as like this belongs to this group this belongs to this group this belongs to this group and it becomes but when you talk like that you you basically find things that contradict that but yeah. you yourself can't accept that fact and you try <laughs> to find a reason how that's not true and that it really belongs to you but but that you have to listen to that voice because it's not you, you can't think like that that's, mm -hmm. the reality of the situation is is that many aesthetics are are very simple. So in, in Western Armenia, if we want to go specifically to the Armenian highlands, you know, Kurds and Armenians in that area share very, very similar types of expression. Um, you know, the like, for instance, there's a dance called Meshokhar. Mm -hmm. um, in Armenian, it's called Meshokhar. Um, and it basically just means Meshokhar, Mesho meaning from Mush. Mm -hmm. Khar is just the sound that a horse makes, right? Mm -hmm. Like when it goes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was very accurate. It was very accurate. I've been I've been working on it for today. Yeah, um, but like, but that's but that's the type of uh, you know it's it's a sh you know shush bar basically like a shoulder to shoulder dance yeah. and um very and, knee. yeah and it's very it's a lot of use of the knees and shoulders and it's a lot of shaking and it mm -hmm. and it looks very primitive like mm -hmm. you know, quote unquote primitive but the Kurds have a very very similar uh, structure of dance from that region. Their, theirs is a little more faster. They engage in it with a little bit more subdivision of like shoulder and knee movements. So they have their own element. Yeah, right? and their expression of zurna and dohol, it's it's a little bit different. But the aesthetic of it is pretty, very, very similar. Um, so, so we should look at it more just regionally. I know we said this word so many times right. today, but... Uh, Based on region rather than yeah. or ethnicity, right? Because like the Armenian dance of this of the Van region mm -hmm. might be more similar to the Kurdish dance of the same region rather than the Armenian dance of like Yerevan right. or right. Yeah, I mean it's parallel with the music too. There's the certain certainly mm -hmm. overlaps. Um, yeah. So Alex, when you came back from that trip um, mm -hmm. in Hayastan, did you did you just, like jump into Armenian dance classes and what did that look like? Was it more national and then you found your way to exploring more? Did so, they have that stuff here? So at the time they did, but I didn't know. It was just starting out. So when I came back, there was no other way for me to learn but YouTube. Mm -hmm. But other than, you know, my involvement in the LA area and then when I went to DC, like there really isn't a huge ethnographic scene yet. Although it is growing slightly, mm -hmm. people are starting to see it and sort of realize what it is. But there are still some sort of, ideological challenges that are serving as obstacles to its full development if you if you were to um fast forward to like you know 10 20 years from now do you think that you know the next generation will be learning folk dance more you know prominently over national dance you think it'll be a blend it depends on our institutions to be honest yeah, yeah. that's why um that's why i started working with hamas guy um mm -hmm. only because as Armenians were very much attached to our institutions, you know, we There's trust an people. To yeah, it, and yeah. we and we really just tend to trust people that are part of those institutions. And mm -hmm. so, really, you know, starting any sort of ref reforms in the community need to start with our institutions. In my opinion, yeah. um, at, at least I find that to be 
efficient as well. So mm-hmm. I started with Hamas guy in DC. We just started a group, but we couldn't kick off due to COVID, yeah. unfortunately. So we're doing it over Zoom, actually. Oh no way! <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. And it's actually not going too bad. It's like it's pretty successful. But um, but yeah, well, and so so, well, so through that it it, it you, this fire can start much easily in the community in terms of exposure. And um, I the value I see in this is you know creating that deeper connection with Armenia and, and our history and everything and right. um. And it sounds like anyone could now learn this because they can go on to your Zoom class. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, the Zoom is still available. You know, plug yeah. it. How, how awesome. do we get there? Yeah, Hamaskayan uh, Basically, just um, you know, just I have a Google form. <laughs> Fill out the Google form. Be in the bio, everybody. <laughs> Fill out the Google form. It's uh, twenty five bucks a month. Nice. <laughs> you know, oh, dude, it's and, worth uh, it, man. I love it. And, and you know what? It's a great workout. I came. It is. Really it really. Out. You have to be in shape. Like that's easy to forget. You know what my theory is? Is because there's so much work in the knees in yeah. this ethnic folk dances. I'm like, okay, Armenia oh. was mountainous. They needed to stretch and practice and strengthen their <laughs> knees, and so there was a lot of this. Yeah. And also, there wasn't so much hopping around because they're on cliff sides and they got to stay within their own place because yeah. they they're gonna. It's very anaerobic off. exercise to an yeah. extent. Yeah. yeah. So. so do you have a do you have a favorite dance oh. if you had to pick one? Mm. I know yeah. it's kind of a loaded question. You can't pick out Kushta. Yeah, or top um, top few. Yeah, but I guess my my top would be Yakush. It's just yeah. like the most like liberating feeling. Oh, as a dance. I've seen you dance. You're, it's the yeah. the energy's wild. Yeah. It, you are a ram. Can you <laughs> are, yeah, no, thanks. <laughs> In that moment, your <laughs> spirit animal is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks. It's pretty uh, cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I feel like also Yarkushta is maybe the one that made it so uh, trendy, or the one that people are aware of to the most hyper aware. Of right. his ethnic dances. Right, that one like that that one's definitely the viral to- one, sort of front and center it. when it when it because the other thing is it's it's the most difficult thing about the, uh, perpetuating the eth- ethnographic movement is that m- the men are the most resistant to learning and and the only reason is that because for so long we've interpreted Armenian dance to be of the Soviet tradition is that and which is like sort of it's almost like leans feminine right when it comes to the ballet as sort of expression of soviet dance men perceive that as like being a more feminine side of dance so they perceive armenian dance as being feminine Mm -hmm. mostly so when you talk about dance or ethnographic dance they only hear the word like dance Dance. and then they just perceive it as like Mm -hmm. what they've always seen it as so yakushta has actually been the main way to get men to just like click with it yeah. Um, and really want to learn it because that's how I learned. That's how I saw. It. That's the first thing I saw. You're like this is badass. I yeah. want to. And then so yeah. then yeah. you're more open to learning the rest of it. You know. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, I mean, you you just touched on many of reasons um, why it's important, but um, yeah. for the sake of of getting it out there, Alex, why do you think Armenian dance and Armenian folk dance is is important? Why is it important for people to learn? Why should people take the time to to learn the different dances and connect with it? So, this is. You know, yeah, but it, it is very important because I do it for two reasons. One is it I just enjoy doing it. Yeah, right. Uh, you feel good. You 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 connect to nature on some level, and it's just spiritually speaking, mm-hmm. just you know, it's it's an experience. You know, mm-hmm. the other thing is in today's world, we it, it in my opinion, it needs to be incorporated as part of our nationalism. Mm-hmm. Um, so. And which is what's happening today in Armenia. So um, it, it is the ethnographic movement is also a nationalist movement. Mm-hmm. It's a romantic nationalist movement. Um, and, it, and it really draws upon the ideologies of Garagin Najdeh, who is a romantic nationalist. Speaking uh, of Garagin Najdeh, uh, our friend Aram Karam from, uh, from Russia, mm. uh, not a lot of people have noticed, but uh, well, Armenian nationalism in Russia is another tricky subject, but... They've been using this Armenian ethnographic dance as their way to express their Armenian nationalism. It's been their like medium for that. It's another opportunity mm-hmm. for creating this spiritual nationalistic connection. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, Alex, uh, thank you so much for uh, coming here and talking to us. And let's dance after this if yeah, you're down. You got it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You got it. Thanks for having me, you guys. Before. Thank you so much. Yeah. And if you'd like to sign up for Alex's class and learn more, follow us on social media where we'll share all the links you'll need to get involved and sign up. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of High Tuk Talks, the official podcast of the AYF West. I'm Krista Marina Apardian. And I'm Haik Minasian. And we're just a couple of Armenians. Dancing in the world. Hey,
couple of army units talking in the woods. 